it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1099, the family room pop-up, and you can check out all of our die designs at KarenBerniston.com. The family room is a pop-up couch, chair, and floor lamp that works great in whatever size card you choose. It does fit nicely in an A2 size card, which is what I will be making today. There are eight dies in the set, and I'll need three of them to start for my couch and chair combination. Okay, for the base of the couch and the chair is this die. It does have score lines in it, and those score lines are all horizontally. So you would not want to run this die through your machine horizontally, or you probably won't get enough pressure against the scores. What I like to do is use cardstock, and then just take a scrap piece of cardstock, maybe an ugly color that you don't plan to use, and double it up. Then run it through your machine on a diagonal, and then that's going to give the perfect amount of pressure against those score lines so that you will be able to easily see them. Now you can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die and today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. Now you can cut that base out of the same pattern paper that you plan to use for the top portion you know so that you can have a completely upholstered couch but I always suggest that when you're first starting out go with cardstock because it'll be much easier for you to see the score lines versus down in some pattern paper. Okay, now I will start folding on all the lines. So on the back of the couch and the chair, there are some tabs for underneath the couch and the chair. Then there are some scores just a little bit up from the cutout, and that is the back end of the arms of the couch and the chair. Okay, then on the front side, there's similar score lines in those same four locations. That's the front of the arms of the the couch and the chair and then the final four are the smiley face tabs so you'll see the score lines to be able to fold all four smiley face tabs to the back so basically everything is a mountain fold and when you work all of those folds as mountains then the smiley face tabs come around to the back tabs and they create these little boxes now you can use any adhesive you prefer definitely choose something strong I like glue so I'm using my line coat neutral pH adhesive in my fine tip bottle and where that glue is going to go is on the back of the smiley face tabs. So just underneath there, adding some glue. And then I think the easiest way to get those two tabs attached is actually to do that in the flat position. So what I mean by that is I'll just fold over until the bigger tabs just come right up to the smiley face tabs and then I can fold over the smiley face tabs and right onto the back of the big tabs. And then since I'm using glue, I'm just giving that a second to set up before I let go. And then I'm going to do the same with the chair. So just making sure everything is straight there. I want to fold the smiley face tabs over and onto the big tabs. And then once that glue sets up, I can bring everything back up into that box shape again. And that's the couch and the chair. Now as I look at the front, I do have the lips to turn down. So they're right here, there's a long fold and same across the chair. Now, there's actually a cut through the middle of it, so that is by design. That's just to keep that from being a really high tension fold since it's so long. So same thing with the chair. There's a cut through the middle of it. That's by design. Okay, I think it's super fun just to go through my paper stash and find pattern papers that might look nice as upholstery. So I found these two, and I'm going to focus on the floral pattern for the couch, so choosing a spot that I like there. And I'm actually going to use the striped pattern for the chair but I'm cutting through both layers with both dies, and that's so that I end up with two of each piece. Okay, so then separating those pieces, I'm going to focus on the floral one for the couch. There is a fold to bring the seat up, so I wanna fold that over. While that is in the folded position, I'm going to find the two pillow supports and fold them over. That's just training the folds. Then I need to bring everything back to where I started, open it up and then just sort of pop those little pillow supports to come into the piece so that as I fold the seat again, now those little pop-ups fold into the piece. Okay, so pretty simple folding on the upper portions of the couch and the chair. Now on the chair, I've decided to do the stripes as my chair. So once again, I'm just gonna find the seat and fold it over. Only one pillow support on the chair, so it's just a matter of finding it, folding it one way or the other, doesn't really matter, it's just about training the folds. Bring it back to where it started, then pop it to come into the chair as you close the seat again. 
Now to add these to the lower portion of the couch and chair, I want the glue to be on those straight sections of the upper portion of the couch. So I'm going to coat those straight portions with glue and it's gonna come up a little past the seat, basically about to the edge of the pop-up because the arms of the couch actually come a little higher than the seat. And then from back behind the couch, so that's the side that doesn't have the little lip that's turned down, then I'm going to wiggle that in until I can get it lined up with the couch so that the sides are perfectly even and that the seat, you know, the fold line that creates the seat is just resting right along that edge. So you should see that fold line right along that edge and that is the proper position. And then the last thing that'll need to be done is that the seat needs to be tacked down right here, but we'll wait until we have the chair on and then we'll just do them at the same time. Chair, same thing. So the adhesive is going on the front of the chair, basically up the straight sides and a little bit past the seat, about to the height of the pop-up pillow support. And then once again, from back behind the chair, I want to wiggle it in there so it's a little tight. You gotta kinda go in there and bend it a little bit to wiggle it in. And then on the back of the chair, the straight pieces will be right in line with the side of the chair and the little cut edge will go right along the fold line of the seat of the chair. And then the last step is just to tack down the front of the seats by putting the glue in there on that lip. And then if you lay the couch and the chair on their backs, you can actually just kind of collapse the piece down, making sure that you're folding that lip in on the cardstock so that it's folded under and then just press it down and it will press itself to the underneath part of the seat in exactly the right position. So same thing with the chair, just make sure that you're tucking it in and then give it a good press. Okay, now this pop-up is done. In other words, you could just put it right in the card. When it goes into the pop-up in the closed position, it's laying on its back. So you never actually really see the back of the chair and the couch very much, but as you see, it's kind of two-tone, and if you'd like to clean that up a little bit, you, that's what the second pieces are for. So those just become basically just covers for the back of the couch and the chair. You need to cut off the part of the seat that's lower than the edges so that it'll fit. And really, you could put that either way. So I could make stripes on the back of the couch or maybe this color. I think I'll do the solid. Now I can't put the adhesive on the back of the paper because I won't be able to avoid the pillow cutouts that way. So the adhesive has to go on the main couch and chair and then the paper gets glued to it. And then same thing for the back of the chair. Just go ahead and cut off that bottom portion of the piece and then just glue it to the back. Like I say, you're not really going to see the back of the couch and the chair much in the finished card, but it just gives it a little bit of finishing. Speaking of cards, you choose your card size. I'm going with an A2, so that's a piece of cardstock, 8.5 by 5.5, scored in the center. And then to that, I added two pieces of wood grain paper. They're each 4 inches by 5 inches. Okay, the closed position for the couch and chair is actually lying on its back. So you would actually collapse everything down to the back and then fold the chair over and onto the couch. It's that bottom shared corner that needs to go right into the fold of the card and you can choose your location along the fold. You also get to choose your angle within reason. You know, you probably wouldn't want to go over about 45 degrees so that you know, your furniture won't be more than 90 degrees when it opens. And then you want to make sure that in the flat position it stays within the card on the back. I'm going to suggest glue for this so that you can coat the entire base of the chair supports with adhesive. So that means the smiley tabs as well as the rest of the big tab that's showing. So both tabs, the whole underside support of the chair. And then just making sure that you've got an angle that you like and that the corner is right in the fold of the card. You want to carefully close the right side of the card against that exposed adhesive. Okay, so after pressing that for a little bit, I'm actually not going to open the card, I'm going to flip the card. So I'm going to take the entire card, flip it over, and then when I open it, I'll have access to the tabs on the underside of the couch. Once again, it's the entire tab that gets adhesive, so that includes the smiley face tab and then whatever portion of the big tab that's still visible. And then once they're both coated with adhesive, Keep everything nice and flat while you carefully close the left side of the card and press it against that exposed adhesive. Now the first time you open it, if you've used glue, I'm a fan of getting in there and kind of pressing them down as I go so they don't want to just pop right off of there. And one kind of cool thing you can do with this card 
is if you go real slowly and carefully, maybe helping your couch and chair move forward, you can actually backfold the card a little bit. And that seems to be very helpful for teaching the furniture to stand straight up when the card opens. So I like to do that little backfold trick. The die set includes three little stitched pillows that are sized to fit those little pillow supports perfectly. The adhesive would go on the front of the pillow support, and then you just go in there and press that pillow to it. Those pillow support pop-ups are a little bit angled, so you get a little bit of angle to your pillow. It's not exactly straight with the chair. It's at a little bit of an angle. And same thing with the couch pillows. They're actually angled inward. The pillows are also a great time to just bring in a little pop of a different color or a pattern. In my case, I decided to just stick with the same patterns but alternate them. So I put the stripes on the couch and the floral on the chair and then one of the solids. The final two pieces in the set are used to make the floor lamp. And I found a little scrap of some mercury glass gold in my scrap bin. So I'm using that for the full lamp. And then for the shade, I'm actually going to do cardstock and corrugated cardstock. And I'm just going to do those at the same time. And there are lines in the shade that will emboss. Since I had two layers, I got sort of the emboss for free, or you could use that as a stencil or I just went ahead and used corrugated cardstock because I just had some in my stash. So the reason I'm going to double up the shade is so that I can change from the mercury glass gold to a solid cardstock before I put the upper shade on. And that way I can put a pop dot and some glue around the edges. And then when I add that corrugated shade, I'm not going to see gold on the edges. I'm just going to see the cream color that I glued down first. Another look is to use vellum for the shade and then put like a yellow rhinestone between the layers so it looks like there's a light in there. Okay, my lamp is ready to install inside the card and I can choose whether that's going to attach to the side of the chair or the side of the couch. And in general, there's always room for it next to the couch, but you might just want a quick check. It depends on your card size, but it usually fits in there just fine. The adhesive would go on the base of the lamp on the side that's going to tuck in, and then you just tuck it inside the couch or the chair, whichever side you're putting it on, and just pinch it until it sets up. And you can see that it just barely fits, but it does fit. I'm using our Border Blends Party Set, and I've blended two together to get a new border in between. So those are fun dies. You can definitely watch the videos on the Border Blends to see how those work. And what I'm doing is I'm using those borders to create a perimeter around my room. So the way I've done that is I've not attached the borders right at the ends where they're going to overlap. And then I let them overlap and then cut on the diagonal. And that will create that perfect little mitered corner. All of our crosshatch shapes make great area rugs. And I decided to use a circle for this one. Now one thing about crossing the fold with that circle is that I want to make sure that I glue it down well on both sides of the fold. And one thing that I think helps is actually to back fold the card as I'm attaching the second side. It tends to put kind of a little bump in the middle of the rug that will actually help it stay attached on both sides of the fold and still be able to open it up fully flat. I'll use our new word set 10, just sitting here thinking of you. The thinking of you is going to go on the inside of the card. And then I put that over a fishtail banner that I actually took out of our new triple flip die set. That'll give me a place to sign the card since that wood grain is so dark. The card is great as is, but all of our animal sets also fit the furniture perfectly. So I have assembled a cat from our cat and dog die set. Now I could attach the kitty to one of the pillows and then she'll be on the furniture, or I could attach her to the leg of one of the furniture and have her sit on the floor. So I decided to have her sit on the floor attached to the chair. Okay, so that completes the interior of my card. And then for a card front, my favorite thing to do is just repeat the same elements. So what I've done here is the same pattern paper and borders. You see the fishtail banner and the cat. I've used the other half of the greeting. Now I like to assemble the couch or the chair as a flat element that can be used on the front of the card. And then we have this great add-on set that's called the Memory Charms that has the mirror, it has a picture frame, it has an old-timey TV. All of those things would work wonderfully with the family room set. Now you certainly don't have to do what I do to balance the card. It works fine just the way it is. But if you'd like to have that balance between the weight of the front of the card and the weight of the back, just add a panel of your leftover cardstock to the back of the card. 
My finished card is an A2 size, so easy to mail in a standard A2 envelope. There really is no theme to the family room, although it is a specific item, you know, a couch and a chair, but yet how you decorate it can set the theme. So here's a get well idea. We have a new die set that says home sweet home. That works wonderfully with the family room for any kind of housewarming or welcome to the neighborhood. And then let's take a look at some ideas by our design team. Fran Sabad decorated the family room as outdoor furniture. Sandy Diller made this great game day card. Notice the mirror attached to the back of the couch on this great card by Kelly Booth. Kelly also made this cute card featuring our feathered animals. Our dies can be the perfect platform for your favorite stamps. Here's a great card by Frances Byrne. And Lois Bach with a congratulatory card for a new home. Sandy Diller made this great Father's Day card using the family room pop-up. Here's a clever idea by Frances Byrne where she made a gatefold card so that she could add the Christmas tree pop-up inside the family room. And then Lois Bach was so inspired by Frances' card that she wanted to do the same thing using outdoor furniture and the pop-up palm tree die set. The Family Room Pop-Up Die Set will be available on our website as well as a lot of your favorite online and local retailers starting mid-July 2019. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.